Hey everybody, welcome back to the garden. I thought I would do an update on the Breba situation for the figs. So if you're not familiar with what Brebas are, they are this. Get this to focus? Yes. So this is last year's growth. And these are little figs that are coming out of last year's growth. That's, that's called a Breba. And then this is going to be this year's growth. Any things that come out of that are called main crop. So, I'm just trying to check out, this is LSU Purple, some of the ones I'm, I'm trialing here. See how they're doing as far as Breba development goes. And, yeah, they got, looks like a few on every branch. Not, not a ton, but yeah, definitely something. I just put them in this, these, uh, I think these are like 15 gallon pots. I just did that over the winter, so they're still probably adjusting. So, all these over here, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. These are all my trial figs. We're in the northwest and right outside of Portland, so it's it's kind of variable. It's, it's not really, yeah. There's, there's a good chance that ones that ripen reliably for other people in other parts of the country just don't work here. So I'm trying LSU Purple. This is Malta Black. It's got a few, few Breva on there too, so that's looking good. This one is Alma Unknown. That's got, looks like maybe a few Breva on it. Maybe none, hard to say. This one is Kadota. You know, as an aside, I'm really not happy with these like foil plant tags. They're really flimsy and, and you know, they, I don't know, they just don't seem to hold up. So if anybody knows of something better, I'd be interested to find out. This one's got you know, quite a few breathing on it, actually. It looks pretty good. This one, I love this one. This one is Violet de Bordeaux. It, the figs on this are amazing. So I'm really happy to see it's got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe, breathe on it. The only downside, I think, to this is that it, it grows really slowly. I mean, this is, I think, my second or third year on it. So I kind of want it to you know, go, just shoot up, and then I can uh, propagate it, make some more of it. Or, or at the very least, just get more figs, because, you know, I don't know. It makes good pot culture, I guess. It's okay in a pot. So next, we'll check out figs over here and the ones over there. See what kind of breba they got going on. So hold tight. All right, we're back. So what do we got here? This is a platyrrola. This isn't ground because according to One Green World, this is very reliable here. Although <laughs> I can't say it has been. But last year was the first year it actually made a significant crop. And we had had it in the ground, I think for maybe four or three, four years before that. So actually, again, it's looking fairly good this year. There's a lot of Breva on it. So that's looking pretty good. This actually ripens a few main crop too, amazingly. This is one that for sure is very reliable here. This is Desert King. Huge fig. And Kind of hard to tell because it leaves out a little bit later, but uh, you know I'm starting to see stuff on it. A couple here. This one I'm trialing, although I have high expectations for it. This is Ronde de Bordeaux, another one of the Bordeaux types. Check it out. This one's actually got quite a lot of fruit on it already. Yeah, like all the way up and down the stem. So this. This one is looking promising, and if it can ripen here, I, you know, plus it's a common type, that would be awesome. Because I could print it in any shape I want. The downside with the Desert King here is that it's a San Pedro type, meaning that uh, the, the Breva ripened without pollination, but the main crop needs pollination. <laughs> That's troublesome because you need to keep letting these branches grow to refill your, your Breva crop. Um, and if it gets too big, you need to make like a big chop on it, big cut, you're going to lose next year's crop, or at least a lot of it. So 
having common figs like this where they put out both a Breba and a main crop that doesn't need pollination and that both ripen, that's ideal. Yeah, look at that little honeybee. Nice out today. So what else have we got? So these, this one, Laterula, Desert King, that's from One Green World. This one, Desert King, that's from One Green World. This one's been our best producer, and I, I think the reason for that is because there used to be a tree right here. We cut it down, and I think I think there was actually one here as well. It's probably using up the nutrients that that tree left in the ground that had been rotting. That'd be my guess because this one grew way faster than the other ones. Um, this one is black Spanish. It's a common type. It actually puts out quite a lot of figs every year. Although the downside with this one seems to be that they split easily and they get so humongous that they, uh, yeah, they, they, they just have problems. They're tasty. And then there's another one here that I'm trialing. This one I got off of Figbid. This is Tacoma Violet. Uh, this one's looking... This one's looking okay. Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. A couple over here. A couple over here. Yeah, this is looking good too. Not quite as productive as Ronde de Bordeaux. Let's see what happens. I also put these rocks around here to kind of give them some heat in the, in the spring. So that's it for the update. Things are looking pretty good. Spring is pretty much around you know, here. Hopefully there's no more hard frost because if there are that could be kind of devastating for some of these trees. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with me.